Welcome back to The Social Regressive. In previous videos, we've checked out the 55 grain gold dot bullets to see how they perform in ballistics gel. We've checked out the 62 grainers, and now we're gonna step things up a little bit because sometimes our targets are not gonna be quite so close and we need to be able to get that heavy hit at a little bit further distance. So we are checking out the 75 grainers. These are the biggest, heaviest ones for 224 caliber. Uh, we got some 308 ones we're gonna check out. And now don't forget that in this quest to figure out how we can find a better projectile for hunting scenarios with medium game, and we're talking about like either deer or in my case hogs, uh, that we are also looking at 350 Legend and 458 SOCOM, so don't miss out on those. We're gonna see how those perform, not just at close range, like a lot of ballistics gel tests, you know, at about 10 to 25 yards. No, 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 we're gonna be stepping these things back and today we're gonna to do the same thing. We're gonna shoot starting at 100 yards and we're gonna back this sucker up and see how much damage one of these bullets can do when it is coming in from a longer distance. The big reason that we're checking these out is that we've gone out on some hunts before and a friend and I, we both had the same 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point bullets that are really match bullets and they do have a great sectional density. They should provide a lot of energy and they did bring the hogs down, but it took a lot of work and we had to track them down into the brush to go do it. These were not one hit takedown bullets. Uh, so I think what we're trying to find here is something that will perform a little bit more quickly. We'd love to be able to just get that one shot, drop the animal. I know that hogs are tough, but if we have the right bullet going on here, I think that we can make it happen. Spear gold dot bullets set themselves apart from many in the industry, first off, for being a great combination of a mushrooming bullet and one that is very efficient through the air. Sometimes you get one or the other, but this is set up to handle both tasks. This is gonna have a great flight, and then when it gets there, it's gonna wreck some things. This, as you can see, is a long bullet. It is set up to be very ballistically efficient, and that rebated boat tail at the end reminds me a lot of like the shy tack bullets that uh, they cut through the air quite well. I'm expecting, uh, well this has a .411 ballistic coefficient, which actually may tip it a little higher than that BTHP match, which is, which is pretty incredible. But the, the fun part here is that when it does hit its party piece, is that that little tiny section of exposed lead right there is gonna mushroom out into a beautiful five-petaled flower and then it should create a great big channel like you see here with the 55. We'll see if it does it here today. The powder that we are using in this hand load is 2000 MR. This is like Reloader 15, but it's also very temperature insensitive. It has a new formulation, and uh, so far it's looking like it's gonna be my go-to powder for 223. It's, it should be working very well with all kinds of different weights of bullet. Due to a mount coming loose on my rifle, these hits are a little close to each other. We can still see what's going on. This is the 75 grain track right here. Not the bottom one that's really dark, the one right above it. So this one hit just slightly up and to the left of that, and you can see that the mushrooming is gigantic. Just like the others, we have a huge wound channel, and you can see that this one does not settle down for a very long time. It gets to about 15 inches before it finally uh, just kind of goes uh, silent here. Uh, it's still ripping a pretty big hole though, and this is the mushroomed 75 grain bullet. Look at that, picture perfect. That's a lot of bullets still in there. It has not come apart in any way, and it has just a gorgeous mushroom going on. This would be continuing to cut a pretty wide swath. This is 100 yards.
Coming to a rest at nearly 20 inches, we have the 75 grain gold dot. And this has a channel that looks a little bit different than the others. You can see first off that it's uh, the longest one that we have. This has mushroomed out very nicely. You can see the petals right there. And it has quite a bit of uh, retained weight that you can see back in that, uh, back in the core back there, the base of the bullet. Uh, this is hanging on very well. And all right, if we track this back, let's start here at the very beginning. This one's a little bit tough to differentiate from the, uh, the 62 grain. Unfortunately, these two uh, came in a little close on the block. But there's the start. You can see that the beginning of its wound channel is pretty much the exact same thing. It has just about the same width, one inch. But that this wound channel doesn't really quit. Where one settles down, this one just keeps on going. And you can see right back here that this still has pretty good retained width and then finally starts settling down once we get to about the uh, the 13 and 3 quarter inch mark right there. That's when it starts to uh, just kind of plow ahead. But up to that point, we're still dealing with about a half inch uh, channel at least on you know one axis cutting back through here so this one is going to be I think a very solid choice especially for deer if you have a high twist 22 250 or if you're one of those that uh, you know maybe you want your your kid to shoot that you know kind of low recoiling uh, deer rifle with a 223 I think that this bullet is going to be the ticket. All of these are going to make a pretty good wound channel, but the fact that this one carries through as far as it does out to 20 inches and uh, seems to dump so much energy all through this very long wound channel, yeah, I think that this one is going to be a bit more humane than some of the other choices out there. Most folks don't recommend that you use 223, you know, a 224 diameter bullet, e even if it is available, unless you're getting up into one of these bigger cartridges like, you know, maybe. 224 Valkyrie or 22250, but uh, I think that even in 223 here, this is going to get the job done on hogs for me. The 75 grain gold dot performed very well consistently. It has a, a wonderful mushroom going on there, and uh, it comes in at 17 and a half inches of penetration right there. So this one uh, is, is, I think it's a bit more of a consistent operator overall, and that's gonna make sense because it's going to have very similar velocities between 100 and 200 yards. Some of these lighter bullets, there's gonna be more of a difference. They'll be moving out really fast at the closer ranges, and then they'll be uh, slowing down quite a bit as you get further out there. But this uh, this track gets a little bit weird. I think the, uh, the blocks were a little bit uh, uh, cattywampus when I shot these. But yeah, there's where it ended up. Here's the track heading back. And you can see that overall, this channel is just huge. Uh, this one is the one. If you're going to be hunting deer with a 223, uh, I think this is the one to look at because this one waits just a little bit. So we're looking at about one and a half inches before it starts opening up. But once it does, it creates a large, very long wound channel going all the way back here and finally settling down at about a foot. This time, we did lose a couple of uh, little chunks of copper in there. It looks like we peeled off a couple of uh, petals from the very tips. If you're looking for a solid performing bullet that kind of performs the same way no matter what the distance is within some of these functional reaches the 75 is going to be the one for you if you do have that 22 250 that uh, can handle some of these heavier bullets you have like maybe the one and eight inch twist then this is going to be a wonderful hunting bullet you're going to be able to get a lot of energy a lot of speed and you're going to be able to make um, pretty humane hits out at some longer ranges out here we can do 20 uh, 224 uh, diameter bullets when we're out hunting, and that's even for deer and everything. And I think that this would be a good choice for those of you that want to head in that direction. So here's the side of it right here, and you can see that, yeah, it's a good three-dimensional cut, and it has a kind of a spiral going on. Yeah, this one is gonna get the job done.
I dug the 75 grainers out of the ballistics gel and here's what we're looking at. At 100 yards, we have a beautiful blossom. This has opened up gigantically. We're gonna see how big this is. Remember that this is originally 224 thousandths and we are heading straight up toward a half inch. Look at that, 487 thousandths across. Okay, so there's 423. It looks like our greatest dimension probably is gonna be right there. Yeah, 487 thousandths as our maximum width. The 200 yard 75 grainer has also mushroomed wonderfully. And we're looking at about 458 thousandths for the maximum width. And that's even at that 200 yard mark, which is just impressive. So yeah, if you wanna be able to stretch your distances out and be able to put a hurting on something, there you go, 75 grainer right there. Uh, this is the one that I'll probably keep loaded up overall. I like those 55s. I'll probably cook those up for home defense, but I think when it comes to hogs, I think I'm gonna be using these because they do mushroom out as quickly as those 55s, but then you have all this retained energy and you actually have a very tight grouping as we're gonna see here in a second. But first off, I'm really interested to see what kind of retained weight that we have. The 100 yard bullet should be 75 grains. And yeah, we're looking at 74.7 grains of retained weight. It probably has shed just a tiny bit of copper uh, because I can see there's a little bit of ballistics gel stuck in the pedals. Let's try the 200 yard one, 73.4. So yeah, this one did probably shed a little bit of lead or copper as well, but still that is a very minuscule amount. It has retained pretty much all of its weight and it's gonna to continue to, to dump that energy at those longer distances all through its wound channel. Here's where things get even better for the 75 grain bullets. You can see that we have three shots that are essentially touching and we've opened up to just under one inch overall. So not only is this going to provide a heavy hit and create a wound channel that's gonna work out really well for us, but we can get on target very well at whatever distance that we want. Don't miss the next video where we compare these to the Dark Horse, the 75 grain boat tail hollow point from Hornady. We've heard how these are supposed to perform, but we're gonna see how they actually perform. And I think you're gonna be pretty interested to see how this goes. And we're also in some of these upcoming videos gonna be testing 350 Legend and 458 SOCOM. Do not miss out. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. The notification bell is especially important since nowadays, you know, we all know that YouTube is trying to prevent this kind of content from going out. And it seems like the notification bell is about the best way that we can get this content actually out to you and you can find out beforehand. I keep hearing from viewers that they come around and they see that I produced a video weeks ago that they were waiting for and it just never really showed up in their feed or anything. Thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts for providing a lot of the materials that go into this. If anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month to keep these videos coming and keep tests like these rolling out, I'll put a link to Patreon. Thank you to Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum level and Joseph Davies and Peter at the 300 Win Mag level. I will see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.